Okay. I have a confession to make. I have never played Skyrim. You need a wee. Yep, you heard right. I have never played Skyrim. Daddy Todd and Bethesda's Golden Child, that I see more re-releases than I can count on one hand, has always been a classic that I've wanted to sink my teeth into. However, in the 13 years since the game's release, I haven't had a chance to sit down and immerse myself in what many people claim to be one of the greatest games ever made. Well, unless you count the Alexa version. You just hate Scottish people, you coward! I've often wondered why exactly this was the case for me. Growing up, I was always much more of a Fallout guy and didn't really give Elder Scrolls a second glance. Maybe it was the fantasy setting, or the combat, or maybe the abundance of glitches I saw online. Don't worry, we'll be talking about these later. Well, I think that enough time has passed and I'm long overdue to see what all the fuss is about. But which edition do I go for? There's so many to choose from, I just can't decide. Do I go for the original on PS3? Or VR and get motion sickness? Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm strapped for choice. Good God. Uh, oh, look, here's one. And it's my favourite price. <gasps> Free! So, I downloaded the game, started my Skyrim journey, and let me tell you, within the first couple of hours, I was hooked. Right away, I found myself awake in the back of a cart and experienced the now iconic intro. Hey, you. You're finally awake. He said it, we can go home now, Give bags at the door! This whole horse ride nicely sets up a few key characters and lore elements that you'll be encountering later in the game. As far as exposition goes, it's decent. Good job Bethesda, you get one point, don't lose it. But eventually we reach the end of the line and I patiently wait to be called forward. You're not gonna kill me! Archers! Anyone else? It's my turn to be summoned and it's here where I get to make my character. But first, I gotta choose a race. And after spending about 10 minutes deciding which one I wanna be, I finally chose to be an Imperial. Because I, I like, like money. money! After much time in the character creator, I decided to play as woman. I give her some warrior paint to make her look badass, and then choose my name. And I need something that will strike fear into people all over Skyrim. A name that will be remembered long after my death, and that will be recorded in history for all to see. Yes, my name will be Karen. <laughs> After I'm done making my character, I walk over to the chopping block, bear witness to my fate, and then get ready for my own execution. I get an assist from a dragon, who I'm sure won't be important to the story later. I make a run for it to a nearby tower. We run up the stairs to try and escape, and oh my oh, Jesus oh, Christ. Oh. Outside, I make my way to the keep, and I give him my first choice. Go inside with either Ralof or Hadvar. Stormcloaks or Imperials. Ah, shit. Um, well, I, uh, uh fuck, I, I, I really don't know. I'm, uh, oh, okay, 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 fine, 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 I'll go this way, I'll go this way. I join Ralof in the keep and obtain my first set of armor and weapons. So I think now is a great time to go over the game's combat. It's all right. Firstly, I really like the variety of weapons the game gives you. You've got your one and two handed weapons, a bow with different kinds of arrows, and a ton of magical spells. There's also different potions that you can use on your weapons to damage the enemies with different effects. And finally, you have shouts, powerful abilities that can help you out of a tough spot but with a huge recharge time. Now you can mix any of these attacks together to completely decimate your opponents. And it sometimes can truly be satisfying. But the majority of the time, you'll encounter a whole load of bullshit. I had to change my attacks so frequently during my time with the game. I always felt like a majority of my hits weren't doing a single point of damage on enemies. But whenever they decided to attack me, a huge chunk of my health just up and vanished. And this is even after finding god tier weapons and armor that have some of the best stats in the game. Not to mention that sometimes enemies can just one shot kill you, even when you have over half of your health. The f is that about Bethesda? Wait, it made me feel like the tons of hours I spent collecting all of these items was worth it. Amazing work guys, 10 out of 10. In the end, I found that the best combination was to just simply dual wield and go to town with the heavy attacks. And 60% of the time, it works. Every time. I found that archery was good for long distance, especially when I was wanting to sneakily kill enemies. Magic was good for restoring your health, but not so much for offense or defense, even after upgrading. The shouts though, I, I, I like the shouts. 
I had so much fun Fusro dying people and watching them flail everywhere. Honestly, a personal highlight of mine. In summary, I give the combat a generous 6 troll skulls out of 10. It could have been better, but it's decent enough that I didn't want to throw my PS5 out of the window. Anyways, back to the game. Me and Raloff continue to go through the keep, we kill a few more guards, wind up in some weird sex dungeon, pick a few locks, skim through a few books, scavenge coins off of some corpses, because remember, I like money. We then come across some caves that are filled with spiders, a giant legion of spiders. We get rid of them, sneak past a bear and escape into the open world. And can I just take a moment to say how beautiful this game's world is? I know I'm playing on a PS5 and that the game has been upscaled and new features have been added, but it still looks incredible. From the way the wind blows on the trees to the sound of the nearby streams and the calm, soothing soundtrack, the world is just so damn perfect. And it's massive too. I really didn't expect it to be this huge. I mean, no wonder people have pumped 900 plus hours into the game. It's packed to the brim with towns to explore, dungeons to clear, camps to rob, and mountains that aren't backdrops. You can actually walk all the way to the top. The only bad thing I will say about the exploration is that when you're climbing the hills and mountains, there's a set path that you have to find and follow to get exactly where you want to go. You can't climb over rocks and try to make your own path. It has to be where the game is telling you to go. For a game this big and open, it sometimes can be surprisingly linear. After escaping the dragon attack, Raloff tells us to go and see his sister in a nearby town for help, before breaking his back, and leads us to go our separate ways. As I make my way there, I come across a hunter trying to snipe a rabbit, I think. I chase after it, but it looks like gravity got to it first. However, it's here where I came across a mine. Curious, and with the prospect of loot inside, I went in, game ended all of the bandits, pillaged their goods, and left with no regrets about all of the murder I just carried out. I finally make my way to Riverwood, and are instantly greeted by the best part of any Bethesda game, the NPCs. You look like a traveller. Someone that has seen faraway places and heard new stories. I talk to a bunch of them around the town and eventually get my first of many quests from this guy called Nick Valentine, I mean Lucan. After almost getting caught stealing his shit, his sister escorts me to where I need to go, wait, never mind, she glitched out. Okay, are you going to move anytime soon or what? This way. Yeah, you keep saying this way to me, I'm waiting, where are we going? No, that's the wrong way. Do I need that guy from Mario Kart to hover over you with a wrong way sign for you to get a f clue? Don't make me whack you, woman. I swear to God, please show me where we're going. Fine. You know what? I'll find my own way. I didn't even want you to show me anyways. I managed to get there on my own, slay the bandits guarding the place, fight some new undead enemy types, use my big brain to do this... Not my finest moment, I'll be honest with you. Find the quest item and use it to unlock a door to this beautiful looking cave. I take the goodies from the chest, obtain a new word of power and fight a mini boss, I guess? But he was no match for me and I take my leave. I return the claw to Lucan and get my reward. I finally talk to Gerda who tells me to head to Whiterun and speak to the Jarl in order to continue the main story. Before I head off to Whiterun, I meet another character who I'm sure won't be relevant to the story later on, cook up a sweet new batch of potions to use, bump into Raloff again, try to pet a dog, break into Lucan's shop, rob him blind whilst he sleeps upstairs, and take back the claw because I'm a menace to this world. After I ruin Lucan's livelihood, I gather my things that I need for the journey ahead and set off for Whiterun to get to the bottom of this mystery. Whew, what a crazy journey so far. And that was only the first couple of hours. I can't wait to play the rest of the game and see what else is in store. I think I can probably get everything done in a couple of days. <laughs> How hard can it be? Well, uh, that took a lot longer than I expected. <laughs> Jesus, how long to beat.com really wasn't lying about this game's length. I did so much in this game, I don't even know where to start. You know what? Let me just list my highlights. I eventually made my way to Whiterun and got acquainted with some of the townsfolk. I also found this little girl and tried to adopt her, but until I get her home, she's just gonna have to live on the streets. Sorry. I became friends with the Jarl and helped him with the dragon problem, but I then later joined the Stormcloaks, took over Whiterun, 
and threw him off of his throne. Betrayal. There was also a ton of memorable characters along my travels. My favourites included Carlia, a cast out member of the Thieves Guild who seeks to clear her name. Babette, a vampire child who is also an assassin. I mean, that just sounds so stupid, what's not to love about that? Delvin Mallory, a gruff Jason Statham speaking bloke that always has a mission for you. A lot of merchants as well, but I'd say that overall my favourites are Percy Honeyhand and Bella Thor. It's a tie between them both. This cryptic cat who is always a delight to see in the world. This smug f who I always wanted to kill every time he asked me if I'd been to the f***ing cloud district. This guy who accosted me quite a number of times. This guy who always told me that he works for Bella Thor at the general goods store. And Cicero. Yes, I like Cicero. Shut up. I completed a plethora of side quests and had a lot of favourites. I found this Hagraven called Melka and helped to take back a tower. After we kill all the invaders and... oh, wait, she's glitched, hang on. After we let her out of a cage and kill all the invaders, she gave me this really helpful staff as a thank you. I got involved with a long heated rivalry between two families in Whiterun and helped one of them find a relative who they believe the other family are kidding. Ah, ah! A lot of side quests gave me powerful new armour and weapons from Daedric Gods. One of my favourite ones was when I came across this talking dog with a New York accent. He was the best guy around! And there was Septimus, a crazy old man trying to get into this cube thing. Well, he eventually gets into it, but then this thing ends up killing him. But there was also the longer side quest that had a lot more lore and missions. I got kidnapped by an assassin cult called the Dark Brotherhood after I helped a kid with a hit he put out on an old lady. I joined them and eventually became their leader. I also joined up with the Thieves Guild in Riften, stopped a conspiracy and restored their honour, and eventually became their leader. I attended the College of Winterhold to learn more magic spells, uncovered a magic relic that this smug f was going to use to end the world or something, kill him, and then became their leader. I also became a member of the Companions, helped out with a few of their jobs, became a werewolf, helped their ghostly leader cure his lycanthropy, and then became- oh. Or oh, you can't actually become the leader of the Companions. Huh. Well, that's disappointing. Speaking of companions, I was joined by many of them along my way. Uthgird the Unbroken became my first, but she was only with me for a short time. After I helped the Isle of Whiterun fight off a dragon, I became a thane and was given a house carl called Lydia. I had a lot of fun with her, but after my first battle with the big bad Alduin, she completely disappeared, never for me to see her again. If you have any news on her location, please call the number on screen. Then after journeying to Solstheim and accidentally starting a DLC questline, I met Teldrin Cerro, who became my main companion for a very large portion of the game. Eventually though, I grew tired of his repeated dialogue, especially when I was trying to listen to important plot details. Like, bro, seriously, just shut up for a second. I don't care what your thoughts are on Whiterun, just zip it. Finally, I was graced with the two best companions in the game. Jazaga and Serana. Both of these characters are absolute beasts in combat. Their attacks are so powerful and can decimate enemies in no time. But their personalities are what make them the best. Jazaga is a Khajiit mage with a soft-spoken voice who always refers to himself in the third person. Serana is a much more complex character. She's a vampire who was locked away by her father for centuries. She disagrees with his methods and assists us in resolving the conflict between the vampires and the Dawn Guard peacefully. I can see why so many people like her. I really like the DLC too. The Dawn Guard DLC was a fun addition, and it was also great to see more of the vampires and how they work. I also like how they were branching paths depending on who you side with. The crossbow was pretty fun, and of course the inclusion of Serana was just perfect. The Dragonborn DLC was my favourite of the two. I didn't expect this DLC to include a whole new map for you to explore, and was pleasantly surprised when I accidentally sailed over to it. Solsheim is a unique and interesting place to explore, and I love coming across its weird and wacky inhabitants. Also, shout out to Marak, the big bad. He felt like a genuine threat, and was also a nice inverse of the Dragonborn. I f***ing hate him for taking my dragon souls though. One time is funny, two times is f***ing annoying, no? The only thing I wish was better about him was a less glitchier boss fight. I fought a lot of enemies too. At the start I fought simple enemies such as spiders, bandits, wolves, etc. But as I went along I encountered more challenging and creepy foes. The most memorable ones I remember were the creepy Falmer, blind, cast out elves who live underground and remind me a little bit of Gollum from Lord of the Rings. There was also the Chaurus, 
Chorus? Ch ch chow Chorus? Strange insect-like creatures who give me the heebie-jeebies. I don't know why, but insect enemies just always creep me out, so these are instantly memorable to me. There were also your typical mythological creatures that you'd expect to find in a fantasy game. Trolls, vampires, werewolves, witches, giants, whoa fuck, droggers, spriggans, dwarven machines, you name it, it's probably here. After a while, I managed to save up enough coin to buy myself a house. I bought one in Whiterun, and over time I managed to pimp it out with some cosy furniture. I first went back to Lucia and finally managed to adopt her. I then adopted a second child called Blaze. I have regrets about this one. The only thing missing now is a second parent. And after looking for a suitor to make me a sandwich daily, I finally decided to marry Yzolda. Because she gives me money! As I made my way across the map, I came across all sorts of unique and beautiful looking locations, filled with so much life and... Oh no, not again. Go away! Leave me alone, please! From NPC towns like Riften, Solitude, Windhelm and Markarf, just to name a few, to the tiny little villages with their own stories and characters. Not to mention the abundance of caves and dungeons filled with enemies to fight, or the creatures that you stumble across in the world just chilling out. Various landmarks litter the world as well, each with their own stories. You can come across ancient dwarven ruins, remnants of a civilization long forgotten, tall mountains for you to scale, and a statue that houses one of the most frustrating side quests ever made. And then finally, the glitches. Fishery is tough. I'm gonna put some coin in Bombastic side eye. That was a lot to get through. It sounds like there's a lot of good quality in there, right? Yes, but actually no. After I got to around 20 hours into my playthrough, I started to notice that the quests are just largely the same. They always boil down to three specific things. Fetching an item, killing a group of enemies, or talking to NPCs. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, yes, but that is what RPGs are like, you idiot. <sighs> Uh, what were you expecting, Mr. Fake Your Opinion? <laughs> yes, I know it's an RPG and that this is almost textbook, but does it really have to be the same thing every single time? I was almost begging for some variety halfway through my playthrough, hoping that something, anything would change to keep me interested. Sometimes I would have to cast my mind back and remind myself why I'm exactly in a cave killing Draugr, and who even sent me here in the first place. Not to mention that once you've discovered a location, you can just open your map and fast travel there, making exploration and discovery pointless. Overall, most of the quests are far too long, have too much exposition, and fail to keep your interest. And I think that the worst offender of this is the main story. The main quest has to be the dullest one in the entire game, and groups all three of these repetitive quest types into one boring package. I tried so hard to care about what was happening with these characters and the lore, but instead found myself struggling to keep invested, and by the end I finished it purely out of obligation. Delphine and Esbern are bland and filled with so much exposition I'm surprised they don't pop. Alduin is a typical one-note villain who just wants to destroy the world because of some dumb prophecy. And the Greybeards, oh my god, don't even get me started on these old crones and their inability to be helpful in any way possible. I hated these guys. 
Parthenax was the only good character in the main story. He did nothing wrong and was actually helpful throughout. I laughed in Delphine and Esburn's face when they told me I needed to kill him. Like, honestly, get f And hey, did you know that Charles Martinet, the guy who used to voice Mario, played Parthenax? I still can't believe that, it blew my mind. Hello! So, yeah, the main quest was lacklustre and it has repetitive mission design. But I don't really think that matters when you look at Skyrim as a whole. Skyrim is a massive, glitchy, fun and frustrating game, all wrapped up into one neat little package. And over my 100 plus hours, I can see why it's regarded as a go. Even though the combat is average, the missions are repetitive, and the exploration loses its charm after you discover too many locations, there's a lot to enjoy here. With each hour I spent playing this game, I felt myself falling further and further into love with the sheer charm that this emitted. It truly was a delight, and it actually got me thinking about Bethesda as a whole. Their games are ridiculously broken, they overpromise and underdeliver a little too much, they try to bleed money from their customers, <coughs> creation glue, <coughs> and yes, those sweet little lies. But their games have always been a fun time regardless. Does this make up for their numerous fuck ups? Oh, absolutely not. They've done some really scummy stuff. But I mean, which game company hasn't over the past decade? However, their games always managed to immerse me in their rich worlds, and Skyrim has piqued my interest in the Elder Scrolls series. Maybe I might finally give Oblivion a go. I would happily go back and revisit this game at some point, and I'm happy to say that I would 100% recommend this to anyone interested in fantasy or RPG games. If you want to go on a journey filled with exciting quests, wacky characters, and a massive world, then this game is definitely for you. Good luck, adventurer. I'll see you in Sovngarde. Do you get to the Cloud District very often? Oh, what am I saying? Of course. Ah!